What's up guys, this is Eric Vasquez here with a brand new tutorial for you today from designcuts.com. In this tutorial we'll be creating a poster design for a book on Scandinavian art in Photoshop. To create our poster, we'll be working with a handful of elements from the Expansive Textures and Patterns collection featuring the North Dream collection from Julia Dreams along with some beautiful textures from Nasi Art, Offset, and Zeppelin Graphics. Once we lay out our poster design, We'll then drop it into a realistic poster mock-up from the Design Cuts Marketplace to take it one step further and create a nice looking presentation. So if you're all ready to get started, then fire up Photoshop and let's begin. So the first thing we want to do once we create our new document here is to give our file a name. So let's go ahead and call this uh, Scandinavian Poster Art Design. Now let's go ahead and change the increments from pixels to inches. And this may seem like a bit of a weird size to some of you guys, but I believe it's uh, about an A4 paper size. Um, a lot of times I'm used to using like letter size or tabloid, but for this we're going to change it up a little bit. And then let's go ahead and set the resolution to 300, and you can leave the color mode to RGB and background content set to white, and then go ahead and click on create here at the bottom. And you'll now have your new document. So once that's all set up, let's get right into it and come over here to the file menu and choose place embedded. Now, once you're over here in the freebies folder for the tutorial, we're going to go into the offset subfolder here and select this ht15.tiff texture. And then we'll just choose place or press return on the keyboard to import it here into our document. Now that we have it, let's zoom out a little bit. I'm just going to increase the size, scale it up proportionally from the center somewhere about there looks pretty good and then just press return to apply the changes now from here I want to press command control I on the keyboard to invert it and you'll notice over here that it now has a smart filter applied to it where you can see that invert effect okay so now that we have another image in here we can just go ahead and trash our background and then let's come down here to the adjustment layer icon and add a solid color adjustment layer now for this, I'm just going to type 3 six times, which is this dark gray color, and then we'll change the blend mode from normal to multiply. And then we can come back down to the adjustment layer icon, and this time let's add a gradient map. Now over here in the properties panel, you'll see that you have this color strip here, where if we click on it, we're now brought into the gradient editor. So inside of here, let's go ahead and select this square on the lower left, and you can either double click this or just click on this color swatch at the bottom. And we're going to update these color values here. Let's go ahead and enter the value 0F3450, which is this dark kind of bluish color here, and we'll click OK. And now let's just go ahead and double click on the other square on the opposite side. And for this one, we'll enter the hex value 00DEFF, which is a more vibrant shade of blue. And you'll now see that you have updated your gradient. So let's just go ahead and click OK now that that is set up. And now what we're going to do is drop another texture on top of this. So come back up to File and choose Place Embedded. And this time we're going to navigate to the Zeppelin Graphics folder inside of the freebies for the tutorial. And we'll just select 2.jpg, which is this cool metallic texture. Okay, so here we're going to do kind of the same thing where we just scale it up from the center until it fills the composition vertically. And now I'll click on it, hold the shift key, and maybe just slide it over to the right a little bit. Somewhere about there looks pretty good. And then go ahead and press enter or return once you have positioned it where you want. Now from here, I'm gonna change the blend mode from normal to subtract. And this is actually kind of interesting. I don't know uh, how many of you guys have updated to the latest version of Photoshop. I just updated mine to CC 2019 this weekend. And one of the interesting updates is that you can now just kind of scroll over the different blending modes to see it update in real time, which is kind of cool. So for now, I'm just going to go ahead and click on subtract to change that. And you can see how that's modified our base of textures here. So now that that's set up, I'm going to select the two smart object texture layer on top, hold the shift key and select my HT15 smart object texture layer, and then press command control G on the keyboard to put it into a group folder. Double click on that group one text and type out BG to rename it. Now let's begin importing some of our other elements here. So I'm going to come back up to File, choose Place Embedded once again, and this time let's dive into the Julia Dreams North Dream collection. There's some really nice looking artwork in here that we're going to be using today, 
And the first one is this cool kind of floral border here. So let's go ahead and choose place and bring this into our file. And we just want to position it somewhere a little bit higher than the center. And I'm going to just hold the Alt Option key and scale it down a bit. Now that's another kind of interesting uh, update here. In the latest version of Photoshop, you no longer need to hold the Shift key to constrain the proportions. You can just hold Alt Option to scale it from the center, which is kind of neat. All right, now let's go back up to File, Place Embedded. And this time we're going to open another texture that we'll be using throughout the tutorial from Nasi Art, which is one of many really cool you know, gold and silvery textures that you guys will find in the full bundle. But for today, we're just going to be working with this one. And I'll be showing you guys some cool ways that you can use this texture here. So I'm just going to position this on top of the border and then go ahead and press return to apply the changes. And now I'm going to turn off the visibility of that layer for a second. Zoom in a little bit here. Make sure to select your border layer and then press W on the keyboard to get the magic wand tool. And click anywhere in this dark gray to select it. And then come up to the select menu and choose similar. And what that's going to do is select everything else on this layer that is that same fill color. So now that you've done that, select the gold layer above, turn the visibility back on, and then we're going to click on the add layer mask icon here. So you'll see that we now have that gold texture inside of all the areas that were previously filled with gray. Now, if you want to move the texture around inside here, you know, you, you might try to move it around like this or, you know, accidentally grab the whole kind of layer mask here. So if you want to move the texture inside around, just go ahead and click on this chain layer, the link between the two, and you can now just kind of tap it or move it around inside there without messing up the mask. So if you want to see how it looks, you know, if you position the texture differently, feel free to do that and just remember to link them back up once you're happy with the size and position. Now I'm going to duplicate that gold layer once and then turn it off. Select the original copy below, hold shift and select the border. Press command control G to put these two layers into a group folder and we'll just call that border. Now I'm going to create a new layer and then press T on the keyboard to get my type tool. And I'm just going to click somewhere below the border and then we'll type out the word Scandinavian like that. Okay, and then you just want to bring over your character panel so that we can change up a few of the parameters for our text. Now the first thing I want to do here is change the typeface to a free font called Bold Rough. And this I just downloaded from defont.com and there is a link for this exact same font in the written portion of the tutorial. So go ahead and download that. Check it out in the written portion. And then just go ahead and highlight this text here and let's change the point size to about 80. Okay, and then just click on your move tool there, press command control T to slide this over. And if you've got the smart guides turned on, it should snap right into the center there. Okay, and then we'll just tap that down a little bit. Go ahead and create another new layer. Click below the word Scandinavian. And now we'll just type out the word art with a capital A, lowercase RT, which I know you can't really tell the difference at the moment. But all we're going to do here is now change this font to another free font called Wild West. Now this is also another free font that I downloaded from defont.com. And again, there is a link for these fonts in the written portion. So go ahead and check that out so you can download them and follow along. And all I'm doing here is just changing the size from 80 to 100 point. Click on your move tool to deselect it. And now I just wanna move this over a bit so that the A is kind of placed below the AV here in Scandinavian. And then just tap it down a little bit, just like that. And now we'll go ahead and add another new layer grab the text tool again, and let's go ahead and type out, we've got two lines that we want to type out. So let me just change the font here first. And for this, I just want to use any kind of, you know, clean sans serif font that I have. Um, so I'll just go with Avenir because it's a pretty nice, easy to read font. And I'm just going to make it about 12 points in size. Now I'm going to begin to type out a retrospective look at its hit return on the keyboard to come to a new line influences and future direction okay and now that you've done that we're going to go ahead and grab our text layer move it up here click inside a few times or press command control a to select all 
And now we want to open our paragraph panel for a second here. And let's just go ahead and click on this icon here to make it right aligned. Okay. And now we can slide it over here. All I'm going to do here is put my type cursor at the end of the word direction, at the end of both lines, and tap the space bar maybe four or five times. Then go ahead and click on the move tool and tap it over a little bit, just so that it hugs the A kind of nicely there. Now come back to the character panel and click on the color. And we're going to go ahead and change the color to FF5858, which is the same kind of reddish salmon-y color used here in the border. And now we can go ahead and close out of the paragraph and character panels. So what I'm going to do here is grab the words Scandinavian and Art, grab those two layers, press command Control g to put them into a folder, double click the group one text and call this folder TT for title treatment. And now I'm going to select that gold texture layer on top that we created before. And what I want to do is move it just above the TT folder. Now I'm going to hold the control key and click on the layer mask and delete it. And from here, what we're going to do is hold control and click on it again, and this time choose create clipping mask. And what that's going to do is create a clipping mask onto the group folder containing our title treatment. Okay, and now I'm just holding the shift key and kind of tapping the down arrow to slide it into place here. So I'm just kind of looking for an interesting, you know, way to position that text where we still get a few nice highlights going across. I think that looks pretty good so far. So now let's go ahead and select our tagline up top here, hold the shift key and then click on the TT folder, press command control G once again, double click the group one text and just call this folder title. So this will contain all of our text for the title here. Now I wanna to begin to import some of the cool Scandinavian elements and tiles. So we'll come back up to the file menu and choose place embedded. And the first one that we're going to bring in here is going to be ornament eight, I believe. So let's navigate to the Julia Dreams folder here and select ornament8.png. And then we'll just choose place to bring that in. And I'm just gonna scale it down a bit, not too much, but we want it to be still kind of big there. That looks pretty good. Then go ahead and press return on the keyboard. Zoom in a little bit if you need to. And I'm going to open this, uh, maybe we'll open the border folder here. Grab 23, that gold texture press command control J to duplicate it, and then command control and the right bracket until it's all the way at the top here, just above your ornament. And then let's go ahead and delete that layer mask once again, and then turn the visibility for that layer off. Okay, well, before I do that, let me zoom out so we can reposition it. I'm just gonna grab that texture, move it over here so that I know that it covers the ornament, and then turn that layer off. Now, Grab the magic wand tool, make sure that you have ornament eight selected and click anywhere in here inside of that off white color and then come up to select similar. And what we wanna do now is press command control shift I to invert the selection and then just add a layer mask. That's just going to knock that color out so that all we're left with is this red and gray. Now use the magic wand again, but this time select some of that dark gray, come back up to the select menu and choose similar. Turn that gold texture back on select it and then add a layer mask. So we've now done sort of a similar treatment here that we had on our border where we've knocked out all of the gray and replaced it with that gold texture. So once you've done that, go ahead and duplicate that gold texture, which we're going to use on our next ornament and then select the one below it, copy to hold shift and select ornament eight, press command control G to put it into a group folder. And we'll just call that folder ornament eight. Now, the next one we're going to bring in here is, let's see, I believe ornament seven in the same subfolder. So just go ahead and click on that, choose place. And this time we've got this cool looking bird here from the same collection, the North Dreams collection. And I just want to align it to make sure that it's the same height as the previous tile that we imported. And I'm just gonna move it over a little bit as well to give it a little bit of space. And now I'll grab my magic wand again, click on any of the off white, choose select similar. And then we can either use that same shortcut to invert our selection, or you can just come up to select and choose inverse from up here. Okay, and then add a layer mask to that ornament layer. And now make sure that you have that layer still selected, not the mask. You can see this little frame around the actual smart object here. And now with your magic wand tool, go ahead and click on any area of the dark gray, 
choose select similar, turn that gold texture back on, hold the control key and delete the layer mask, and now add a new layer mask based on that selection. Now that looks pretty good, but I also want to come in here and change this blue to match that red. So a quick and easy way to do that is to just add an adjustment layer with a clipping mask. So hold the Alt Option key, click on the adjustment layer icon, and choose solid color from the top. And here we're going to check off this option that says use previous layer to create a clipping mask. Click OK, and then just come over here and use the eyedropper to sample that color, FF5858, and then click OK. So there you go. Now we've got our second ornament in place. Now just make a second copy of that gold texture and turn off the visibility for the moment. Select the copy below, 23, copy 3. Hold shift and click on the ornament 7 layer. Press command control G. And this time let's just double click ornament 8. Press command control C. Double click group 1. And press command control V to paste the same name. And then all we have to do is just replace that number on the end. Now moving along, let's go back up to file and choose place embedded. And we'll come back to the ornaments and grab ornament one and choose place to bring it into our document. And now we're going to do the same thing here where we scale it down and try to match the, the height of the previous two tiles. Click, hold the shift key and slide it over so that it stays in line with the others. And now we're going to kind of repeat that process. So use the wand, click on any area of the off white here, choose select similar, invert the selection, add a layer mask, and now with the same layer selected, use the wand again to select any of the dark gray, choose select similar, turn the gold texture layer back on, but delete that layer mask, and now add a new layer mask with that same selection. Okay, so now I want to make this blue also gold so that it matches the leaves here. So the way that we're going to do that is to just click on the ornament smart object layer, press W to get the wand, and then click anywhere inside of this blue color, do the same thing where we choose select similar. But now all we need to do is click on that layer mask for the gold texture layer just on top. Make sure that you have a solid white foreground color selected over here. And then press Alt Option Delete. Now it's just going to fill the mask with your foreground color. Now if you don't have white set to your foreground color, a quick and easy way to reset the default colors is by pressing D on the keyboard. And then you can use the letter X to toggle back and forth between those two colors until white is in the foreground. All right, now once again, duplicate that gold texture layer, delete the layer mask, and turn off the visibility so that we can use it in our next fourth tile. But before we do, just grab those two layers, put them into a new folder, copy the name from ornament seven, paste it, and change the seven to a one. Now let's come back up to file, choose place embedded, and we can now place our fourth tile, which is ornament four, and we'll just select that here, press return to import it. Okay, and then we're just gonna scale it down, match the height of our other tiles, and slide it over a little bit, and then press return to apply the changes. Now this time, as you might have guessed, we're going to knock out this off-white, so select it with the wand, and then come up to the select menu and choose similar, invert the selection, and apply a layer mask, and now let's also go ahead and select the dark gray, choose select similar, turn on the visibility of that gold texture layer, and then add a new layer mask. Now this time, instead of making the blue gold, let's just make it match the red. So just like we did earlier on, we're going to select the ornament, hold the Alt Option key, and click on the adjustment layer icon to add a solid color adjustment layer. Check off this box to use the previous layer to create a clipping mask and then just use the eyedropper to sample that red color and click OK. Now I'm going to select the Ornament 4 Smart Object, hold Shift and select 23 copy 5, press Command Control G to put it into a new folder, copy the name from one of the other folders, double click back here and just change the 1 to a 4, or whichever name you copied, just change that last number there. And you now have these four tiles in here. So I'm just going to select all of them, hold the shift key, and maybe tap them over to the left a bit just so they're more uh, centered below our text. And let's also come in here and select ornament four. Just grab that whole folder, press command control T to do a free transform, hold the control key and click on it and choose flip vertical. So you may have to you know, hold the shift key and just reposition it a little bit to drag it down. But I just wanted to change the orientation up a little bit just to mix things up. 
So what I want to do from here is select the Ornament 1 group folder, press Command Control J to duplicate it, then press Command Control T to do a free transform, and let's just scale it down a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to position this down here in the corner, the lower left corner. All right, and nudge it over. Okay, and then we'll select that Ornament 1 copy here from the lower left, duplicate it by pressing Command Control J, press Command Control T to do a free transform, hold the Control key, click on it, and choose Flip Horizontal. And now we can slide this copy over by clicking and dragging while holding Shift, and we're just going to move it to the opposite side on the lower right. Okay, so we should now have an ornament in each corner on the lower portion of the design. So before we move on, I want to select the original ornament one and maybe flip it the other way. So just press Command Control T, click on it, and choose Flip Horizontal. Click and hold the Shift key and then just drag it over here and reposition it. All right, somewhere about there looks good. And now what we can do is take both of those smaller ornaments, ornament one, copy two, and the original copy, press Command Control J to duplicate both of them. And now with both of those layers still selected, press Command Control T, hold the Control key and click on it and choose Flip Vertical. And so you'll now have two copies which we can just click, hold the Shift key, and drag up to the top here. So you should now have an ornament in each of the four corners. All right, so there's our main poster design. So what I wanna do is grab all four of these corner ornaments Press Command Control G to put it into a group folder, and we'll just call this Corner Ornaments, and then move it to the top by pressing Command Control and the right bracket. And now we can select these other four ornaments from the tile here. Press Command Control G to put those into a folder, and I'll just call this one maybe Row of Tiles, something like that. And now just go ahead and be sure to save your work. And then what we're going to do is select the very top folder, which should be the Corner Ornaments, hold shift and select the BG layer. And now press command control J to duplicate all of those folders. Now once you've done that, press command control E to merge them together. And let's just go ahead and rename this layer artwork merged. And we can now go ahead and open our poster mockup. So let me go back to the freebies folder for the tutorial. Okay, just back up one step here. And I'm going to be using the print mockup pack from the Design Cuts Marketplace, uh, which has a plethora of really nice looking print mockups. But for the purposes of this tutorial, we'll just be working with the A4 Poster Flyer Top 3 PSD file. So go ahead and select that and choose Open. And now, once this file opens up here in Photoshop, you'll see that you just have a couple of layers here. And we're going to double click on this Replace A4 Flyer layer, which will open up this blank window. So now we can take our poster design here, grab the artwork merged layer, click, hold the shift key, and then drop it over here into the empty smart object. Now it fits perfectly because this poster mockup was intended for that A4 size that we started with. So once you've done that, go ahead and press command control S to save it, and then command control W to close out of this window once it has saved. Now when you return, you should see our nice looking Scandinavian art poster design on this mockup. So let's just go ahead and change a couple more things here. I wanna double click on this adjustment layer and just sample some of the color here from the background. Click OK. And now let's press C on the keyboard to get our crop tool. And I wanna just crop in from both sides here. So just drag the handles inwards while holding Alt and Option on the keyboard. And it looks like this one needs to come in just a little bit more. So I'll just drag this one in without holding Alt Option. And that way we can just get our design nice and centered. Once you're happy with the crop, go ahead and press return on the keyboard. And there you go. We have now completed our Scandinavian art poster design and mock-up in Photoshop. So this is just one example of how you guys can use some of these cool textures and illustrated elements from the expansive textures and patterns collection. It really has a great amount of stuff in it. It features an endless variety of high quality textures and patterns that'll help you improve your design work right away. I hope that you guys have found this tutorial to be helpful and you know we would love to see how you guys use these elements in your own work. So please do uh, drop us a line and share that with us. So thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Eric Vasquez here with Design Cuts and we'll see you next time.